So today what we wanted to talk about um, is something that's been playing on my mind and in fact that's why we stood up. Small business chat, wasn't it? We're talking about yeah. so solopreneur isolation. Now I used to hate the word solopreneur. I used to hate it because I used to be like, but I don't feel like I'm alone because I feel like I have you, I have like him, I work with, um, there's always a team around me. But yeah. actually, when you start up your business by yourself, did anyone tell you, Karen? Did anyone tell you what it really was like? <laughs> well, then you were going to have to be the business accountant, the creator, the marketer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, crazy. And so I think the ups and downs of how it challenges you um, and how you're... I, I, I genuinely feel um, that you are discovering a new layer of yourself and your capabilities with every challenge that you have in business and in life. But I think sometimes that we are encountering things in business that would perhaps escalate the lessons that we would have in life. Um, you know, it could be around relationships, it could be around boundaries, it could be around money, it could be around, um, you know, all sorts of, the, you know, different aspects of it. And, um, I think that when we started, you and I both started at the same time, roughly by ourselves. I mean, we both had other businesses before that. Um, but when you're on your own and all of a sudden you haven't got a team around you um, as much or on a day to day, you can feel quite um, sort of isolating in that respect. So I think what, yeah. what Karen and I wanted to talk about was perhaps um, the ways that we, what we found and how we got around that um, to provide some help to you because uh, that's why we created Small Business Chat. For us, it was our office kitchen. It's like we all work ourselves. We were just talking about online and offline, and this is why the power of online is good. <laughs> and the, the tech is great, because we can connect, um, and that you can come in and have a little chat with us. But Karen, what about you? How did you find it? I'd want to hear from your experience. Like, what, what was it that you found the most difficult, and how did you get around it working for yourself, I suppose? Yeah, the work... The working from home for start was probably, I mean, you don't have to be as a solopreneur. You can obviously still work from a co-working office to get a space, but um, it's just having that discipline. Um, so it's, you know, getting up in the morning, getting dressed. I mean, you don't have to dress up, which is great. You don't have to sort of put your face on and do your hair every day and everything like that, but just get up, get changed and try and have a space which is separate to the rest of your life and then make sure that you stick to your hours and then you can shut the door at the end of the day and it's one of the things that Fran who does mindfulness was telling me about just you know have have some sort of little thing that cuts you off that starts your day and, and stops your day so she's if you close the door look at the door and realize that's it you're closing down you stop in business for the rest of the day and and that's it so things like that getting dressed and actually going to the, and sitting in the computer in a different room so it feels like a working day but it doesn't have that stresses of commuting back and forth um and just yeah i suppose you know sort of having some sort of plan i mean it's it's really hard and you've got to all find your own ways of doing it but having some sort of plan and schedule for the day that you can work on making sure that you kind of balancing your time you having you know you having you time and you having you know computer time and then you having time away from the computer because I think it otherwise in the evenings you know it's really easy to just start replying to emails and answering them before you and weekends and before you know it you're working 24 7. It's such a good point actually I found that the first time I worked from home ever worked from home I actually could not handle it. I was in this very room, funny enough, and um, I could not handle it. It took me six months and I started to go stir crazy. And I realized where I was going wrong. These very things, these very things that Karen's saying right now is that I felt like you're constantly on. I wasn't shutting the door, even though it was a separate room. Um, but you know, I'm somebody like you, I have to get up, I have to, you know, get showered, dressed, feel like I've, I've, I'm starting the day. But I think where you might think you've not got a commute, that you can start earlier, that does not mean that you, you, you literally grab the phone straight away and you log on. That means carve some time out for you, perhaps at the beginning, and maybe sit down. I, I like to sit and go, like, what is it? I, I always set the day before what it is that I have to get done that the next day. So 
look, before I sleep, I'm not in a panic of waking up going, <gasps> write that down. Um, but that's a good, that's a really good idea. I, think. I always have to do it the, the night before so that I can sleep easily, knowing, well, it's in the diary, I've, I've thought of everything. So I just have to try my best to blitz it that day. Um, the other thing that I would say is, um, I think that's great routine. I think definitely your own space. And like you say, you've got to find what works for you. Um, one of the big things that I found, um, not so much now, because more people are starting up their own businesses, but back in the day when you, like I was probably one of the first ones that I think you were as well, like to start your own business um, at the time, you have a great support network of friends and family who are cheering you on. And that is super like, Oh, that's amazing. Honestly, it, it fuels me on days when I'm just like, I can't do this. Why am I doing this? Like, what's, you know, why I'm having a bad day. But um, I, I would honestly say, find your tribe. Um, you know, I have a key network. Like I said, I, I never feel like a solopreneur um, because I actually feel like I've got a team behind me. Um, and even though we've all got our different businesses, I'm all like, no, we support each other. We always help each other. We always step in. I mean, I know for you, for me, like, you know, if you needed something, you pick up the phone and vice versa. Um, and there is a diehard tribe that, you know, like, like friends and in life, I have that for my business as well. And yeah. sometimes it merges over. It, yeah, I think it's really important though to have, like you said, those business ones because you get support and stuff from your friends and family. But if they don't understand what it's like being a small business owner or what you do, you can't sort of talk to them about those business things because... There's no kind of two-way street. It's just a one-way you offloading. So, you know, having people like you, you know, other collaborations I've got with people like Ian, um, Lynn, you know, there's so many different people that I, um, Gail, you know, that I can chat to. And we all sort of like discussing different things. You know, you can ask for advice and something, get feedback on something. You know, if you can't find something, work something out, you know, you've got someone to sort of bounce ideas off. Um, and get help with and I think that's really important and and if you haven't got that I think one of the best places to find that is go networking I totally and and actually one of the key things I found out more recently is that I've been doing online networking and masterminds for the past two years um and even more so you would have your network of, of colleagues that you know but you have to expand that out to other business owners not just the colleagues that you work with but um, I found that since networking locally, like I just love, there is a real difference of having someone that's on my doorstep. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's, you know, I, I've really tried, um, I find it easy to connect to people, but I do find that when you have those relationships with people that you are seeing and you are able to be in person, I mean, I'm a hugger, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I thought, you know, if I, I haven't seen you for ages, but I know that when I'm going to see you, it'll be a big hug. And, you know, I, I want that connection with that person. Um, and some of the collaborators that I work with, you know, it is, it is, it's your business family in a way. Um, and so to have that nearby as well as online um, that you do meet once in a while, you know, of course you can. It doesn't always have to be local, but there, there are some people that I know live abroad that, again, I still have this connection with, or they live overseas, and I'm not going to see them like once a year if I'm lucky. But mm -hmm. to have the, the mix and making sure that there is somebody on your doorstep, um, you know, and there is somebody that you can jump on a call with or have a Zoom with, it's all very different, isn't it? Yeah. So to have that blend of network. And I think as well, you know, going back to something you said in the beginning with solopreneur and it sounds quite isolating as well, sort of solo, doing things alone. But when I was looking up, because I was going, what's the difference between a solopreneur and an entrepreneur? And a lot of people call themselves entrepreneurs, but actually an entrepreneur is someone who's continually starting businesses, but not necessarily continuing with them. They probably start up, sell it off or pass and someone else to start up another one. They keep going, they keep multiply, you know, they constantly creating new businesses. So we're solopreneurs is what we do. We have one business and that is what we do. Um, so it's a single, single business as opposed to multiple businesses. See, um, I agree. Yeah. I call myself, I wouldn't call myself an entrepreneur. Like when they say you're an entrepreneur, they know I'm a business owner. Um, yeah, <laughs> so yeah. there's all the different term, terminology. <laughs> I don't have the brain capacity. <laughs> I have too much to think about in one business as it is, let alone five. 
<laughs> yeah. Oh dear. But um, yeah, I think I can't. I'm just trying to think if there's any sort of other tips that can that can help people. Um, well, I mean, the other thing that I sort of also recommend, um, and and I think it's when you have your network and also when you have your your boundaries. Um, my biggest tip is to ask for help. Yes. Um, you know, I, I think we all have our strengths and weaknesses. There is no shame in that. And, you know, I marvel at other people's strengths. And I've got to the point now where I can put my hand up and go, that, that's not me. <laughs> like, I, I can't, you know, I cannot do certain things or I don't want to do certain things. Yeah, it's absolutely. It's I think five times longer. Mm, I, and, I agree, yeah. And, and, and I would say that, um, you know, it's not just about helping in terms of services, but also I think that the impact, I remember reading about two years in when I started the journey, about the impact of, um, on mental health that being a business owner will have, um, you know, and, and how that can impact you, you know, how that can provide, you know, use your problem suffering, anxiety, depression, you know, um, it's, it's such an up and down journey that we have to learn to regulate. I think that's one of the biggest tips is that if we can manage to regulate ourselves, we will get ups and downs, we, we just will. But there is um, sort of coping mechanisms in our head of, right, what's the situation? My first thing when something's truly freaking me out, it, or if something has happened is, this sounds morbid, but did you die? <laughs> but did you die though? You know, and, and, and it's like, no, it's not going to kill you. It's fine. So breathe. You know, like it's almost like how to, how to negate half the fear and anxiety of what will be. It's like just, just you know, nobody died. And in five years, will this actually matter? And I've mentioned this like several times, but one of my key things. So you kind of bring yourself down to regulate how you're going to deal with the situation afterwards. And sometimes you just might need help doing that. And, and, and I think that that has been my biggest um, sort of driver is that when I reach out to people, it's like, I want you to be able to have that, you know, like, no, I guess I keep on saying, nobody posts their ugly cry on Instagram <laughs> when you have those <laughs> days. No one does that, but it's all behind the scenes and it always happens that it you does. Must have an up and down situation. And if you have your tribe that you can go, I'm having a really off day or actually, this is how I'm feeling. Um, I'm quite matter of fact. I'll tell you the state, the, the state of it, but I won't necessarily tell you how I'm feeling about it. Um, and I have noticed that going forward. As if you ha if you are a business owner and you have a business owner friend, sometimes it's not enough just to say, "Well, how are you? How's it going?" But how does that make you feel? And then that's another level that that person might not want to like, might want to share, might not want to share. But I think that's the importance of sharing it is that, you know, how are you feeling about this? Okay, talk about it. Because yeah. I got that from my friend Hugh. He said as well, ask someone, how are you? And they go, yeah, fine, absolutely fine, you know. <laughs> and then it's like, how are you really? Yeah. And it's just that deep thing. And then you have people sort of, you know, come out and say, you know, because I think a lot of times people are, yeah, it's great. I'm really busy. I've got lots of time. And then it's like, how, how's business really going, you know? And then you sort of go, oh, well, actually struggling a bit. Things are up and down, you know? And we all have this, like you say, it's up and down. Cash flow is always an issue. Getting regular work in, you know, it's not like getting a paid salary. Um, and you struggle with this throughout business. I mean, it's, it's very, it's, you know it's hard because you sort of look up at people who are like maybe mentors or people that you're following and they like you know how to make you know 130 thousand dollars a week or a month you know how to get six figures in six months and all of this and you think well if they can do it then i can do it and actually it's not that easy and they they've probably been working at that for years and years and then they've hit the right place at the right time with the right people because and it's worked yeah. You know, it doesn't mean that that's going to work for everyone in that short amount of time. So I think, you know, don't be too hard on yourself and, and you know, and get and get help, you know, get a mentor, get a coach. You know, some of the top sports athletes in the world have coaches. And there's no harm in having a coach as a small business. Coaches have coaches. Yeah. Like, 
no one can do this by themselves. No one can do this by themselves. If you if you are you are formidable, um, and <laughs> call me. <laughs> But yeah, I'd love to. We want you on the show. If you've never had to get any help and done all by yourself, we want you on the show. We want to know your secret. And you are a seven million seven million (laughs) bigger. (laughs) If you're that, Um, but I mean, yeah, I'm sure. I think there is so much hard work, and I think that's that. Those those people that have reached it, hats off to them, kudos, because they will tell you their stories and they will tell you how hard it has been. Um, and it's not that we revel in the in the difficulty, not at all. We're trying to make it easier, but you know, to be naive to say it won't be difficult and we won't have down days. I think that that's naive to the point of um, you know you're not helping yourself in that. Yeah. you'll feel it harder. Yeah. But you know, it's like take take it more as realism and then be optimistic about it. <laughs> yeah. Because it is stressful, but it's a different kind of stress. It's a different kind of stress to working in a job for somebody else. So you've, you know, as long as you, like you say, got that realistic attitude, you know, then I think you'll cope okay. So I hope that's been helpful. I don't know if anyone else has got any tips or if they have, please share, because I would love to hear some more, wouldn't you? I think. Yeah, well, and just share your stories about how you're coping in isolation, you know, we'd love to hear, so. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's something that we've still got challenges ahead. Um, but again, it's that realism with the optimism um, that I think that, and also learning to laugh. I think for me, I have to have humour. Well, I have to find the humour in something. No matter how bad it gets, there's got to be a little bit of humour somewhere, um, you know, and, and finding those people that you can do that with. Yeah. Um, I think is, is, is definitely key. Great. Right, so hopefully that's been of help, um, and that's why we do this every Wednesday, so you're not alone. Um, but we look forward to seeing you next week. Uh, same yeah. time, bring your cuppa, and uh, come and join Karen and I uh, for our small business chat. Thanks very much. Yeah. Thanks very much, guys. Take care.